Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a bold adventurer man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, battled for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he, indestructible steel was he. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventurer man. In 1830, Nacogdoches was a sleepy little mission town just across the border in the Mexican state of Texas. I'd been through the town before, but never stayed longer than it took to water my horse. A military execution in Nacogdoches was something new. And not one, but two. Preparen! Apunten! Fuego! This was very strange. But as a visiting American, it was, of course, none of my business. Alto! ¿Qué hace usted aquí? ¿Qué es lo que desea? Puede hablar un poco más despacio, señor. An American. Then we shall converse in English. I am Capitán Hernando Sánchez of the garrison of Nacadoches. Your name, señor? I'm Jim Bowie. New Orleans. You are passing through, or is this your destination, if you will pardon my asking? I'm just passing through. And your business? My business happens to be my own, Captain. This is a trouble year for my country, señor. Fear and suspicion are everywhere. If I could just but see your passport. My passport? I didn't think I needed a passport. I never did before. That is to be regretted. You will please come with me to the office of the Alcalde. Well, I I'm not sure I want a passport, Captain. In like fact, the way things seem to be around here, I'm not sure I want to stay in Texas at all. But you are in Texas. I am desolated. But I must ask you to obey the military law, even as I must obey it. You tell me I'm under arrest? Permit me to warn you against violence, senor. I am myself a man of tender sensibilities. But my soldiers, they feel no pain in killing. Well, I came to Mexico on friendly business, Captain. So I guess there's no point in getting off on the wrong foot. Lead on. After you. Ignacio, I am intruding, but it's a matter of business. Come in, Captain. May I present Senor Bui, a gentleman from New Orleans. Don Ignacio Flores, Alcalde of Nacodoches. Senor. senor. His daughter, Senorita Josefa. La senorita. His sister, Senora Rodriguez. Uh, senora. And Colonel Bradford of the Mexican Army, our military governor. Colonel, I'm honored. When Senor Bui found himself in a present country without the necessary passport, he insisted on coming here to secure it. Mm, it will be swiftly arranged. Uh, <clears throat> you are the buoy who invented the knife? Uh, I have to plead guilty to that, Colonel. Say, so you're American too, aren't you? Yes, I was born in Virginia. I'm now in the service of General Santa Ana. Oh. If you will step over here, Senor Buoy. If I could see your credentials, mean so much identification. <laughs> the last time uh, I was in Texas, the only trouble I had was with a couple of Comanches. <laughs> well, there's been a change of policy, Mr. Bowie. We're now trying to keep out all undesirable foreigners. Well, I'm sure Senor Bowie he's in no way undesirable. Well, I'm afraid I don't have a thing on me in the way of identification. Oh, wait a minute. I do have a letter from an old friend asking me to join him in Texas. I'm sure you heard of him. I see. Of course. This will be quite satisfactory, senor. Excuse me, Don Ignacio. This letter is from a friend. I'm proud to say he is, Colonel. No passport. He's under arrest. Under arrest? What for? What has he done? 
Not for what he's done, for what he is. Spy. I'm not a spy. I'm here to buy land. This letter is an invitation from Sam Houston to meet him here in Texas. That's right. He's located the land for us. You don't know that Houston's ambition is to make Texas an independent republic with himself as president? You don't know that he's inciting American colonists to revolt, turning Mexican citizens against their own government? Well, that's all news to me, Colonel. I never aimed to join Sam Houston in anything stronger than a drink. Don Ignacio, this man is a professional killer. A knife fighter who consorts with gamblers, pirates, filibusterers, political opportunists. Your reputation has preceded you, Mr. Bowie. Disarm him, Captain. I beg you to consider the presence of the ladies and of my troopers. Please, senor. Nobody's going to get hurt. I give you my word. The military prison, Captain. After you, senor Bowie. Senora, senorita, my apologies. How long are you going to let that tyrant degrade us, Ignacio? Something must be done, Papa. This cannot go on. Have you lost your manhood, brother? Oh, these terrible soldiers. Silencio. Will you please to retire? Boy, I want Houston. You tell me where he is and you go free. I don't know where he is. Come now, that was a very friendly letter. Inviting me to come to Texas, land of opportunity. Nothing more. But you were to meet him. I was to look him up. His movements are well known. Unfortunately, not quite well enough. There is a price on him. A rather high one. I would be willing to pay it even to you. I don't think I understand an American like you. Or care to. Mr. Bowie, I have not been an American since the Creek Campaign of 14. Nor do I care to be. You were at the Battle of Topeka? I was. Well, so was Houston. Did you know him then? We were both under General Jackson's command. Hey, wait a minute. You're that Bradford. Houston told me a little about you. Did he? Just what did he tell you? He told me he was an ensign then and that he stormed the Creek fortifications with a handful of men and got himself surrounded. And that Jackson ordered you to come to his rescue, and you refused. Go to the aid of a glory-seeking young fool who had managed to get himself and his men hopelessly entrapped? I quite properly refused, on tactical grounds. But the court-martial said cowardice, didn't it, Colonel? Yeah, I can understand why you're no friend of Houston's or Jackson's or any friend of theirs, right, Colonel? Jackson. I despise President Jackson and all his works. And I shall leave nothing undone to injure him or his country. So, boy, you can see it's important to me to find Houston. You have until tomorrow morning. If by then you should still prove stubborn, I will give you cause to regret it. for the humble fare, but the wine is passable. Do you come here to 
work on me about the whereabouts of Houston, you're wasting your time and spoiling my appetite. Would you like the return of your weapon? Well, now, look at this. What's the price? The assassination of our military governor. Your knife and your freedom for the death of Colonel Bradford. Yeah, I heard you the first time. I'm probably not the only one. My guards do not speak English. And even if they did, I'm not the only Mexican who hates this tyrant. Who... To see a man like Bradford use his military position, to rob men like yourself, to humiliate his own countrymen, it is a thing to make one sick. Yeah, I see what you mean. I'm not feeling too good myself. Then you accept the honor? I'm afraid not. Price is too high. Oh, now, don't be modest in your buoy. We know of you. With this knife, you've slain hundreds. Is that what you heard? Let me tell you something, Captain Sanchez. I never used that knife in my life, except in self-defense. Let me put this matter to you from a different direction. Think of it as, a, as an act of patriotism performed in the name of liberty for your country and mine. Let me put the matter to you from another direction, Captain. How do I know that Bradford isn't the patriot and you're not the tyrant? You have the rest of the night to reconsider, Senor Bui. I have orders from my colonel to flog you in the morning. You are no servant of mine, Hernando. You are a hypocrite. Senor. The American was flogged. And by you. By my orders, Don Ignacio. You. The son of my dearest friend. You, the man engaged to my daughter. I will relieve Senorita Josefa of the contract, if that is your wish. That is not my wish. The arrangement was made between your father and myself. Have you thought of insurrection? I have. Then you better think harder. The colonel asked me for the hand of Josefa. Why the pig? I will call him out. No. You cannot risk at all. I'm getting old. And if you are killed, who is going to protect Josefa from those grasping dirty hands? There must be another way. I will find a way, Don Ignacio. I swear to this by the Holy Mother. May God be with you. I persevere, Bowie, once again. Where is Houston? Even if I knew, I wouldn't tell you. Your final word? No. At dawn, Captain, you will execute him as a foreign spy. Yes, Colonel. When he comes to, inform him of his sentence. Yes, Colonel. Yes? With your permission, Colonel, a matter of importance. Come in, come in. Did you tell him? I did. 
Is he scared? Do you think he'll crack? It is my considered opinion, Colonel, that you will never break this man. He leaves me no alternative. Colonel, uh, permit me to differ with you. It is for this that I have come. Differ? With me? In your own interest, sir. Despite Senor Bowie's notorious character and infamous reputation, he does have friends in high places. To execute such a man at a time like this, it is sure to bring inquiries. Perhaps even damage your relations with General Santana. Are you suggesting that I let him go? There are more ways than one to kill a man, Colonel. So is I? It is not in the character of Senor Bowie to take his own life. No one would believe it. But it is in his character to... Uh, to try to escape. Glass of wine, Sanchez? Thank you, Colonel. Salute. Senor Bui. Wine and fruit, senor, to visit in prison. It is one of the seven corporate works of mercy. You mean paying your last respects, huh? Is that what you mean? Our visit is a work of mercy, yes. But it's also more than that. We come as friends. You must, of course, peel the fruit before eating it, senor. So you may continue to have a good health. Thank you. Tomorrow morning, one half hour before your execution, a priest will visit you. When he leaves, this door will remain unlocked. In the courtyard, just inside the open gate, there will be the priest white horse. Good luck. Guardia! with him now and all is ready. The guards would not shoot until ordered to do so. Good. For an occasion such as this, Colonel, why not the hunting rifle? The gift from General Santana. Excellent, Sanchez. Why not indeed? With your permission, Colonel, it would please me to load it. Well, thank you, Captain. You've become most considerate the past few days. A distinct improvement, I might add. Promotions do not come through sulking and resistance, you know. I am learning a man can grow in many ways, Colonel. Even through patience. Now you stick with me and you'll go far. Always close behind you, Colonel. Even to the dead.
sworn I had him. to say the word and six bullets will shatter your heart. Well, what's holding you back, Colonel? Am I too close to the horse? Is that what's wrong? Stay where you are. I'll give you another chance, Bowie. I'd still rather have Houston. You have exactly five seconds. Or well, you're getting monotonous, Colonel. Wait. A most unfortunate accident, senor, which leaves me in command of the garrison. As one, however, who has never been in complete possession of your case, I must ask you to return to your cell. Please do as I say, senor. This time, the muskets are being loaded by the troopers themselves, and they seldom make the mistake of forgetting to include the load. of Nocodorches, once again in full control of civil matters, I find you, Senor Bui, to be a man of honor and goodwill. I therefore return to you your baggage, your arms, and your gold, together with this passport. Oh, thank you, sir. And if I'm to buy land in Texas, I have to become a Mexican citizen, is that right? This is a law, Senor. Well, I'll think about it. We are sorry your visit in our town was not more pleasant. There's more to life than uh, just pleasure, senorita. And uh, my visit here has been a rich and rewarding one. You will love Texas, senor boy. And Texas will love you. Thank you. Uh, best wishes, Don Ignacio. Adios, senor. Buena suerte. I will take you to your horse. Hello, Pete boy. I wish to thank you for all you have done for me. Seems to me I'm the one should be thanking you, Captain. <laughs> no, senor. My country and I lost a bad friend, but gained a good one. Without you, nothing would have changed. Well, I'll be seeing you again soon. Yes, on the 5th of May, the day of my wedding to Senorita Josefa. Ah, oh, congratulations. Say, uh, what makes you so sure I'll be back then? That is the day your passport expires. You must be here to renew it. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Captain. Adios, amigo. Sometime, somewhere, I know. And here's the star of our show, Scott Forbes. Hello. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And that you'll be with us next week for another adventure in the exciting life of Jim Bowie. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He was a bold, adventurous man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. Battle for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he, Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man. He roamed the wilderness unafraid from Natchez to Rio Grande. With all the might of his gleaming blade, he fought for the rights of man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man.